Welcome to Food for Thought, the place to explore, celebrate, and manifest a life motivated and defined by unconditional compassion and optimal wellness. My name is Colleen patrick Adreau, and I am your host. Today's episode is a tour of Tuscany in conversation. What that means is I sat down with my travel business partner and friend Bridie Reed from World Vegan Travel and some of the travelers from our tour of Tuscany trip. Now, this episode aired first on the World Vegan Travel podcast, which I highly recommend you subscribing to. And we sat down with Anna and Sherry and Ratika and talked about Tuscany. Now, whether you come on a joyful vegan trip or not, and we do have space available in our tour of Tuscany 2023, and it's almost sold out, but whether you do or not, this conversation I think will be interesting for you. We talk about pros and cons of coming on a group trip, what their thoughts were, and even reservations were about coming on a group trip, and then how that played out. They talk about personal recommendations. We talk about highlights from Tuscany, surprises that they had, and some of their favorite recommendations. Again, whether or not you come on a joyful vegan trip or not. So if you've ever been curious about Tuscany or curious about group travel or curious about joyful vegan travel and you want to hear what it's like from a traveler's perspective, this is the episode to listen to. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this conversation. everyone and welcome to the Wild Vegan Travel Podcast. We are doing something a little bit different today and I am here with my dear friend Colleen patrick Goudreau. Thank you for joining us today Colleen. Thanks for having me Brady. And we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking to some of our travellers who joined us in our trip that we did to Tuscany. Just We just got back about six weeks or so ago and I think all of us are so excited about seeing each other again, even if it's through a screen. Are you excited about this recording? I am. I was thinking that I think people are still on the post-trip high, I think, which is a very familiar feeling I think a lot of people can identify with when you travel. And I think everyone's still on it. And I think some of that is because of the correspondence we all still have in our WhatsApp group. That's one of the things we do on the trips, right? And I think also this uh, this recording is also uh, adding to it. We've, we've gotten some really enthusiastic responses from our travelers. We really do. And we put together a few questions of some things that we want to ask them. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that listeners will come away with maybe some excitement for travel to Italy and uh, some tips and recommendations for a trip to Tuscany and also You know, if you're interested in joining us next year, we have space available at this precise moment, don't we, Colleen? We do. We do. It's filling up fast. It's really encouraging, I think, now that things are starting to be clear that we are going to be living with this uh, particular coronavirus uh, as an endemic rather than a pandemic. I uh, I think everyone's excited to travel again, and we're very happy to take everyone along with us. So without further ado, we will lead on in and uh, you can meet our travelers. Thank you for taking the time. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna. I'm from Oakland, California. I was delighted to go on the Tuscany trip. Hi, I'm Sherry. I'm from Seattle and was so excited to meet everybody on this trip. Hi, my name is Ritika. I'm from Los Angeles and I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Super fun to see all your beautiful faces. Uh, So we're very excited to talk about Tuscany. And I think one one thing I can say is that we're really grateful to be able to offer a lot of different trips now. We've got Europe, we've got Asia, we've got Africa. um, We have, we're, 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 someday we'll do South America. Uh, And um, so there's lots to choose from these days, which is awesome. So the first question I have for each of you is why did you choose Tuscany? Yeah, I mean, it's Tuscany. It's Italy. It's amazing. Do I need any more reasons? But truly, it was post-pandemic. Are we allowed to say that? Kind of post-pandemic type of world. And I hadn't traveled really in such a long time. I hadn't been to Tuscany in almost 20 years. And the only part of Tuscany I'd seen before was Florence. And I knew there was a more quaint part of Tuscany that I'd never experienced. And... Tuscany, when it calls, you answer. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Tuscany called and Anna answered. I love it. What about you, Sherry? 
I want to repeat what Anna said. I mean, you really said it um, The when Tuscany calls, you answer, because that's really what happened with us is um, we were looking for travel to uh, kind of celebrate getting out of, hopefully getting out of the pandemic and, um, and along with some birthdays and things. And uh, Mike remembered, my husband remembered that I went to Florence as a college student and he's like, what do you think about going to Tuscany? And there's that call. And it's like, well, of course I'm going to go to Tuscany. And it was, yeah, it was even better than I expected. That's awesome. And you studied Italian at university, right, Sherry? I did for two years. I studied Italian and it was fun to go back and as, as like this adult um, because I didn't have as much fear as I did back when I studied uh, and I was too afraid to speak it back then. But yeah, uh, I I didn't speak it a lot this trip. I didn't really have to, but I could listen and I could understand a lot of what was being said around me. And it was just wonderful. That is so exciting. That is so exciting. What about you, Vitika? Well, Italy had been on my dream list for years and I was just holding it off because I wanted it to be perfect. I didn't want my first impression to be really stressful trying to find vegan options and just stressing about where I was going to go. And so when this opportunity came up, I was like, wow, I don't have to worry about anything. And they got everything covered and I love Colleen. So it was a complete yes. <laughs> Alrighty. I have another question. So had any of you done group travel before and what were your expectations about this trip? Because I know it can be a little bit you know, you're not quite sure what to expect when you do group travel. So what were your expectations about that and, and about the trip generally? I'd never done a group trip before. And I've told this to some of you already. I was very nervous um, about doing one and doing one with one friend that I knew and who was working. <laughs> and then I traveled as a single woman and not knowing anyone. I was just like, what am I getting myself into? What did I say yes to when Italy called? There was just some, and I did Florence on my own before the trip, which I loved. And I remember um, as we were uh, about to meet for the first time on that fabulous roof deck, being a little bit like, all right, this portion of the trip has ended. And now I got to go interact with people <laughs> that I don't know and have never met. <laughs> And then you get up here, and I think I was among the first ones to arrive. But it was the setting itself that was, you see the Duomo, it was on a roof deck. There's appetizers, there's drinks waiting for you, the sun's shining. People are starting to gather, and it was almost like instant comfort in some ways. I knew I'd be taken care of right away, but I'm not going to lie. I was nervous, and I'm like, this is a thing that I'll do once. I don't know that I'm cut out for group travel. <laughs> Yeah, I I think you're not alone there. And I think you can only explain it to people. You have to experience it because I, I wasn't a group travel person <laughs> before we started hosting uh, trips. And uh, there's something special, which I think we'll probably get to when we continue, as we continue the conversation. Um, traveling with a group that you can't, you, you can't understand until you do it. But more than just group travel, it's the, it's a group of like-minded people. Uh, not going to lie, like incredible people of high caliber and amazing integrity and just joy and fun. And so like, we're just really lucky to have those kinds of people travel with us. But I think that's what really makes it special is the like-minded um, aspect. What do you think, Sherry? I think so. Well, we had traveled in a group before and, uh, you know, it was interesting because we pretty much kind of just did our own thing within the group. And uh, we were with Mike's parents as well. So it was like, we had our own little tiny group within the group. And I kind of expected that it would kind of go that same way when we uh, signed up for this trip. But I am happy to say that we didn't do that. You know, we, of course, we had our quiet time and our own time together, but we were able to really kind of interweave with the group and enjoy. I don't know, it was an enhancement to the art, the history, the the music that we experienced, the fun that we had to have this group. And as Colleen said, of the like-minded people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I the first My first ever experience of group travel was when I was working for a group travel company a long time ago. And as soon as I led that first trip, I, I realized that 
there's something really special about group travel. And that's just been amplified by like so many times when um, through our own trips, through like-minded people for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just riffing off of what um, Sherry said, I think that's something to be said as well, that there is space to be alone and there is space to be, if you're on your own, just on your own or the friends you're making, if you do two people want to go off on their own, or if you're with a partner, I mean, there's just opportunities for that as well. And yet, and we always give that option to everybody. And yet everybody travels in a pack. (laughs) Like People don't want to be apart from each other. And it's just so adorable to watch that happen. So I love that people have the option and they take it, but often we just, you know, want to be together and we, and experiences are enhanced when we're sharing them with people. And I think that's, I think that's the truth. And um, so in terms of not just your expectations having been met, not having been met, what other things could you say about the trip itself and or Tuscany that surprised you? Like what being there again, was it impressions you had from, you know, several years before when you had been there that were different? Um, just anything to say about the place itself that was surprising to you, Sherry, you can, you can take it. I think the surprise came more from in, inside. I uh, remember when I was a student there that I spent a lot of time being nervous and afraid. And, you know, I think I've grown more into my skin as an adult and, and being there this time, it was, uh, I was, I felt more whole. And so I just could enjoy myself rather than being worried all the time. And it was just, it was beautiful how it just sort of unfolded after that, you know, just sort of looking around and being like, oh, I wish I had been like this as a kid, but you can't, you can't do that. you got to grow at your own pace. So, And that's why it's good to go to the same place at two different times in your life as well, because you could really see the difference between who you were then and, and, and how you experience it now. What about you, Ritika or Anna? Anything that surprised you? Um, this is Ritika. For me, what surprised me was the amount of creativity that went into making the food and the amount of creativity behind the recipes, how it was presented, the, the menus that were created each day, and how delicious the produce and the individual ingredients were. Like, I literally felt like I was eating from delicious, like sustainable Tuscan earth, like all the goodness that goes into that into my belly. And that it's, it still goes through my mind, even now in terms of all the delicious food that we ate and how nourishing it was for the soul as well. So that really stood out to me. Yeah, I think we need to maybe explain to listeners like a little bit more about what you're talking about, because the food is such an important part of this, of this trip. So for those that don't know, most of the meals that we had, um, particularly the breakfast and dinners, were to, at the Agrivilla e Pini, which is an all-vegan um, villa. And uh, they grow, they have um, vines for wine. They also have olive trees for their own olive oil as well. And they also have permaculture back gardens, which at the height of their harvest, I think actually provides like 62% of the food that, of the vegetables and fruits that are served on the property. And it was quite funny. I have to tell this funny story because I remember when we first decided that we wanted to work with them, uh, I said to them, I said to them, okay, so it's two months out. Can you tell me exactly the meals that you will be preparing? And they were like, we don't know the meals that we'll be preparing until the morning of of the day, because we don't know what produce we're going to have. And that really comes through, like everything is just so seasonal and creative and um, delicious and vegetable focused. Like there's there's not even any sort of um, a vegan processed meats at all. It's all just completely organic, natural food. And it just feels good to put that in your body. That was a great explanation. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the things that was uh, imported into the United States um, several decades ago was the concept of slow food and it came directly from Italy the whole concept of slow food and literally eating what is in season and eating what's in your backyard and eating what um what's what's available um comes straight from Italy and it was Alice Waters who in California here in Berkeley she brought it that whole concept over here to the United States so um, so it is something we can still celebrate and we can, we can do our best. It is a very different way of eating in the United States. And of course, it, you know, as Italy, you know, modernizes, there's changes there too, but 
one of the one of the questions I'd like to ask all of you is because I, we asked this in the beginning of the trip. I think it's relevant to this. Is uh, is you know we again we we go to a trip and 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 we have kind of things we want to leave behind when we get to the trip. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's a relationship. I don't know. Whatever. Um, and when we're leaving the place that we've just been visiting there's things we want to take back home with us. And for me, I would say that would be one concept, the idea of how we eat and, and food and, and cooking. Um, so what about all of you? Were, were there things that you really wanted to hold on to and take back with you and have been able to take back with you since uh, since you've been there? I mean, for me, um, in some ways, well, obviously I took home wine and olive oil from the places we visited in a literal fashion. And I've been enjoying that. And we've been texting with the group since then. But I think for me, it was the idea of saying yes um, to things that feel luxurious and abundant and doing it without guilt. Uh, so that's definitely something that's true for me. Uh, I want to echo what everybody is saying about the food because since I've come back, I've really taken a pause to see what the food industry is like where I live. Even though I do live in Los Angeles and we get amazing produce in California, it's like, how am I preparing it? What am I doing in times in which I feel like, oh, I'm in a rush in my day. Let me just eat like a fast food vegan and eat something quick versus taking time to like slow down and nourish myself. And I really think of all the memories from Italy, the amount of time and care that goes into food and the importance of it. And I could feel that in my health. I could feel that when I was there. And I wanted to bring that feeling back here. And so I've definitely been cooking more and I've definitely been taking more time for meals and just really appreciating like the sweet life, those sweet moments, even when life gets hard. That just what reminds me of Italy, that there is a good life, even amidst everything that's going on. And how can we pause and just enjoy that for a moment? Uh I think I can echo what Anna and Ritika have said, and that is, um, I, for us, I, I speak for Mike too, we've brought back this uh, the sweet life that we just kind of keep saying that to each other over and over again. Is this the sweet life or is this stress? Is this, you know, what? It, how do you incorporate that into your life? And making decisions such as signing up for our next World Vegan Tour was all about um, remembering the pleasure you know, remembering the sweet life and let's go do it. Let's go live that life. So that's what we brought home along with wine and olive oil and pasta. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing how a really great trip just for me, it sets me up for many, many months. I just have this post-holiday high, post-vacation high and uh, it's just gives my body and system and mind a little bit of a reset. And uh, I usually come back really invigorated with lots of ideas and, and things that I really want to do. Whereas if I'm just working week after week after week, I like, feel like I'm on a treadmill and I just don't ever have that pleasant shock to the system, I guess, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so glad you all brought up that whole idea. I mean, again, we talk about slow food, and that means quite literally the the food itself and how it's grown and where uh, where it's sourced from. And as you know, the slowness of the meals we have. I mean, that is something Brighty and Seb and my husband and I, uh, David, who do these trips together, um, the Joyful Vegan trips together, we talk about a lot. When we did um, a trip to Italy back in 2014, we had a experience of a very typical Italian lunch. And we kind of use that all the time as our barometer for what we want to create for our travelers and certainly what we want to create for ourselves. And it was, you know, like a four hour lunch. And that's like not atypical in Italy, which is so different. Now, you know, I'm going to talk again about the countryside and kind of the rural areas of Italy, because, you know, you have cities like Milan in the north and very different. They are a lot more fast paced and they don't do those kind of languorous lunches the way the south and the central part of Italy does. But, um, but that's our kind of touchstone. And I have been trying to do that. I mean, I I entertain a lot and I love bringing people together through food. And so I do that a lot. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I said to David, I'm going to surprise you with the lunch and we're having a lunch Italy style. And we had uh, a friend come over and we had a four hour long lunch and it was just absolutely heavenly. So those kinds of things, being able to incorporate them as opposed to like Brighty said, work, 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 kill yourself and then go on vacation. 
and then work, 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 you know, come home and then go on vacation. Like that, that's not sustainable. And so to be able to take these kinds of things home with us and incorporate them into our everyday lives, I think is so important. And what better place to do that from than, than, than Italy, who I think they do it very well. Yes. Um, I'm so glad, Colleen, that you mentioned the long Italian lunches and dinners because that was my fear going into this trip. Like, what am I going to talk about with like strangers for three to four hours? And and like, what, am I going to get bored? Am I going to want to like hide away in my room and get exhausted? And just really what surprised me was like, I didn't want them to end because the type of people that Colleen attracts in her world and, and Bright, Brighty and Seb do was just such engaging interesting, like well-traveled, just really open-minded, open-hearted people. And so it felt like I've known them forever and I just want to keep talking with them and enjoying life together like this. And that was a huge takeaway for me because I used to think like, I'm going to get bored of these lunches and just focus on the food and be like, feel like an outsider. And it was the complete opposite. And I am, that's been such a huge takeaway for me from this trip. I love that so much. Anna, did you want to say something? Well, the f- longest lunch was the rustic lunch at the at the Alice of Wonderland one, which was probably not how y'all planned it, but it was like a surprise in the best way possible. It was amazing kind of home cooks. Co- those of you that are better with words than I am describe it, but home cooked um, type of thing that felt like we were in someone's kitchen and just eating what they eat at home. Uh, and it was, I think, over three hours, four hours, just a little bit. And to Ritika's point, 100%, I was not bored. <laughs> I loved every single second of it. And might have been one of my favorite meals, which is not, it's hard to select a favorite. They're all amazing. You know? Yeah, that was, that was a really fun lunch. So for listeners, the lunch that Anna is referring to is um, at this, uh, agriturismo, like this little beautiful place in the Val d'Orcia, which if you can imagine lots of rolling hills with cypress pines. And it was June. It was quite dry. It was quite a hot day. It was a little bit warmer than normal. I think all of us um, got a little bit warm at, at various points, but uh, it also has a sanctuary attached to it as well. So this sanctuary very kindly hosted us in this most beautiful place with this most incredible views. We had like a four course lunch very leisurely and then um, went and said hi to the animals that are the uh, many dozens of animals that uh, Ludovica looks after over there with the most incredible views. It was really rather special. Rutika, that was the first time you had gone to a farm animal sanctuary, isn't that right? And perhaps I'd, perhaps Sherry and Anna as well, but I remember specifically, Rutika, that was the first time you'd gone to an animals and, and, and met farmed animals. Oh, it was amazing. I didn't realize how much it would touch my heart because, you know, you see, you see before I became vegan, there are petting zoos, there's all these other kind of ways to interact with animals, but it never really felt right. And then coming to this trip and being able to be so welcome and guided because I was still a little nervous. And I remember that being like, oh, come, come eat this pig and like rub its belly. I'm like, they really love it. And he like showed me. And then I just like, my heart just melted after that. And it just, it, it, like I always say, it renewed my reason for why I became vegan was to do it for the animals and to feel connected in that way, especially considering what the animals went through to come to the point of being at a sanctuary just brought so much gratitude to even be present with them and then to just like love on them. <laughs> uh, well, I just w- want to go back to what Ritika, Ritika was saying about the uh, sitting at lunch for three hours and and sort of worrying in the beginning, what are you going to talk about for that long? Uh, you know, there's small talk and then there's real talk. And I felt like every time we sat down together, we just all had these real conversations. And I don't remember ever feeling like we were just small talk. Oh, how's the weather? Whatever. Yes, it was so hot that day at the animal sanctuary, but it was, that's not what I think about. I think about the food. I think about the rolling hills. Of course, I think about those animals that were just amazing. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, to have people around you who are going back to that like-mindedness and are kind-hearted and compassionate, and I think empathetic because I think we have to kind of have some empathy in order to be able to see 
what some, someone else is comfortable with and or not. And we just were able to flow in our conversations. And it just, it was so easy. This is Anna too. Um, ditto to everything that Sherry and Ritika said. And we also had a ton of fun just being silly too. And that I think comes with the like-minded group. But that, I mean, there's a light hardness to this. Embracing of this uh, sweet life, as Sherry called it. Um, and I don't know if that happens at every single trip, but I hear it does happen. And I've read there's a magic that's creative with like-minded people coming together. But we had a ton of fun dancing, drinking, um, alcoholic beverages or not. Uh, we had a ton of fun. I just wanted to add to the podcast listeners that Anna was the queen of hosting our dance parties and leading us and <laughs> teaching us different dances and bringing the whole group together, even people who didn't expect that there would be dance parties on the Tuscany trip. It happened and it was fabulous. <laughs> I, it's funny you said that because I, there were some people who follow me. This is Colleen who who said, um, "So do we have, do we have to dance?" Like I think there's also the fear when we talk about dance parties that people are like, "Are there okay? Is there a good, definitely is it mandatory?" And of course, no, because when you hear someone say that, like when you hear about dance parties, it sounds scary. I know it sounds it would sound scary to me because I would be like, uh, "What does that mean? What does that look like?" But that's the point is that this is every trip is different and there's an organic nature to it and it's the people who come and the and the combination of people who come and the music that's being played and the time of day and the time of year um we you know we didn't have a dance party in our october tuscany trip we weren't outside as much right so it just it, it's a different it's it, it it plays out very differently and um absolutely i mean the amount of laughter that that we witness that we partake in brings so much joy to my heart because I, you know, you know, we're very grateful to be able to do this and bring you all together and to watch that kind of joy and connection taking place. I feel like a proud mama, a proud mama bird, a little bird, big birds. And it just makes me so happy. So a lot of dancing, a lot of fun, but the fun happens whether we dance or not. So anybody who's listening, don't, don't be afraid. You're not going to be forced to dance. And, and it's not just us as well. I would really love to add, Colleen, it's not just you and I and our travellers that think our travellers are great groups. Like the people that we work with, like the Benjamin and his family who own the villa, the guides that we work with, every time they come, they look after our groups, they're like, yeah, this is a really lovely group you've got. Your groups are always so nice. nice. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. What can I say? <laughs> Oh, that makes me happy. I have a question for you all. Like, this is a question for people listening. It could be people that are thinking about coming on a trip or just people that are thinking about going to Tuscany. What would be a recommendation that you would have for them, whether it's a restaurant or a place that we visited or a town or a, a something that they need to bring? What is a tip or a recommendation that you would like to give People listening, whether they are coming on a joyful vegan travel trip to Tuscany or just going to Tuscany under their own steam. Well, I can say two things just right off the bat. Train station pizza in Florence and the boat trip on the Arno uh, in Florence, but also as the group, because we didn't, we did do the pizza with the group, but um, Anna, was it Anna in Volterra? Who was our guide in Volterra? She was, um, Annie, she was amazing. I would recommend any tour that she gives um, to go anywhere with her because she was just so fascinating. I'm still thinking about stuff that she talked about in Volterra. What are some other highlights for you? T t tell that that's really, I think, really helpful because you're, you're touching on some really great highlights, whether, again, you're coming on with us or on your own. Yeah, uh, the, the Arno, the boat tour was a sunset tour that we did. Um, and the guide, it was through um, tours by local. And she did, she had like champagne or Prosecco on the boat. And th there are only just a handful of boats that are on the Arno at any given time because they have to be, um, have some sort of special certification. And it, so it was very empty. And we just, we went underneath the um, Ponte Vecchio and we saw the sunset. It was just magical. And the guy who was our, if you could have Danielle, then I would go totally ask for him because he was so awesome. He was reading us poetry, telling us jokes. 
making us laugh, singing for us. And at the end, he gave us little bracelets. And we just had, it was, it was just magical. And then I think um, all of us, did any of us not have in this group, not have the train station pizza? I had the train station pizza. It was great. Okay. I, I can't recommend that enough because that was just so fun. You know, you're a train station and it had this great pizza and it was vegan and, and um, it was so much fun, more fun to share it with, with everyone who could be there uh, as part of our group. And I, I wish I could remember the name of the uh, place. I'll search for it, Sheree, and put it in the show notes. And um, yes, th this amazing pizza at the train station was not part of the trip, but after we dropped everybody um, off at the train station, we all had a little bit of time before we had to get on our ongoing trains. Uh, and we all had like a, what well, most of us, most of us were able to have a lunch together at the train station. So yeah was it was delicious what about you Ritika what would be your tip or recommendation I I think what I was amazed by when I was observing the menus as we were walking around in Tuscany and uh, in the Italy area that there you can pretty much find a vegan option pretty much anywhere that you will go even if you don't go with the trip I think Colleen has talked about in her podcast but really seeing the marinara pizza and 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 the different options like at their base there's there are a decent number of vegan options that you don't have to stress that you're going to be stranded somewhere and you won't have something to eat and I didn't really truly believe it until I visited because I was thinking of Italian American and how challenging it is so rest assured like you will have food now, you may not have the variety of food that we get like on this on this trip together, but you will be able to eat. And I think I was really pleasantly surprised by that. Just being open and welcoming new experiences and new people. I mean, I'm kind of looking at this little podcast as a reunion with uh, some fabulous women that I met on the trip. And I wouldn't have met them had I not said yes, right? So it's just being open to all the senses, this was truly a trip for, and Tuscany, I guess it was a trip for Tuscany. There is for every single sense, um, there's something for you to take home. Um, and I loved it. Colleen, is there anything else or anyone else got anything to, they want to say? Yeah, I'm basking in the glow of, of, of you all. Thank you for sharing all of that. And thank you for, for sharing you with us and for letting us share this with you and for you sh uh, sharing it with the people, uh, just sharing. Thank you for the sharing. Um, truly so generous and, um, and, uh, and, and these are lifelong friendships and, 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 you know, I have the, the, the joy of hearing from so many of the people who, you know, who listen to my podcast, et cetera, and I have a connection with them, but once you come on these trips, it's a completely different experience. And I feel like I've come away with new friends um, from these trip, from this trip in particular. And um, I'm really grateful for that. So thanks. Thanks, ladies. Well, we're going to be seeing uh, Ratika again in November in Rwanda, which is so exciting. And I will be seeing Shiri in South Africa. I don't know whether that will cross paths with Colleen. I'm not quite sure at all. And I know that Colleen sees Anna all of the time. I have to see you, Anna, at some point soon. We'll have to have a reunion in person. That would be great, Colleen. And Sherry and Mike are coming to Northern Italy oh, yes, next year. Of course. of course. Yeah, so we yes. will see them in Northern Italy. Yay. So we'll all see right. everybody. We'll see everybody. Yeah, thanks, Brady, for putting this together. Really special. This was so much fun. Colleen Patrick Gaudreau here again. I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was really so much fun connecting with Bridie on her podcast and talking to all of our travelers. Remember, this podcast is 100% listener supported. And if you'd like to join other supporters, please just go to patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Gaudreau. You can join benefactors like David Cabrera and Alexander Gray, angels like Brooke Boussard, Mikhail Stone, Jeannie Stryler, and our newest angel, Carrie Parker. You can join heroes, Simon Small, Angelica Lofton, Jennifer Statmiller, Jennifer Watkins, Gerilyn Hilmar, PJ Schuster, Denise Hoss, Skins, Rangini Mohan, and Tina Strassheim. Thank you again for listening, everyone. For the animals, this is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. <laughs>